Malcolm Ackman uh, brings a personal journey into heart disease prevention, exploring the impact of diet on lipid profiles. Please welcome Malcolm Ackman. Check. Sounds good. May 5th, 2008. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm at the airport with my wife, and uh, we've just got back from the trip of a lifetime to the Galapagos Islands. And uh, while we're waiting for our bags, I see on my cell that uh, my sister-in-law is called, so I, I call her up and I say, so uh, what's happening? And she says, uh, guess where your brother is? I say, I don't know where. <laughs> she says, uh, he's at the hospital and he's going to be undergoing quadruple bypass heart surgery. Well, my brother has that surgery and it's a success, thankfully. But let's go back five months to January 2008. It's a new year and my brother thinks, time to get back in shape. So he gets on his treadmill and he starts experiencing some unusual discomfort in his shoulders and chest. And uh, he's thinking, you know, maybe this is angina. So he composes a letter to our family doctor and meets with him in February 2008. Now, I want to explain one thing. At this point, we have known our family doctor for over 30 years. So he has the perception that we are slim, fit, and active, and at age 58, we don't have heart disease. So he completely brushes off my brother's notion that it could be angina, and says to him, you know what? It's all in your head, so get back on your effing treadmill. Well, a few more months go by, my brother's still having that discomfort, so he contacts a fellow he knows through his church, who uh, so happens to be a cardiologist. And he's describing his symptoms. And the cardiologist says, Myron, I do this all the time. You have angina. I want you to take two aspirin, go straight to the hospital, and get yourself checked out. So my brother does that. He gets an angiogram which shows extensive heart disease, and he undergoes quadruple bypass surgery. Well, I don't waste any time. I make an appointment with our family doctor, and uh, fortunately, <laughs> he wasn't there. He was on vacation, which was fine with me. <laughs> so I, I end up seeing a female doctor, and she was good, she was compassionate, and she says to me, uh, Malcolm, as an identical twin, you must be feeling very vulnerable. I say, yeah, you got that right. And right there, in that moment, I became a citizen scientist with the intention of learning everything I could to avoid my brother's fate. I ran out and got some books, including this one called Reverse Heart Disease Now by a cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Sinatra. An excellent book, I'll be referring to it periodically. So, June 2008, that female doctor sends me for my own cardio workup, and at that point, everything was fine. They didn't find anything troublesome. But in May 2010, after undergoing a routine treadmill test with my cardiologist, he comes out and says, Malcolm, you flunked it. <laughs> I, was literally I was literally shaking when he told me that. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do next? So I'm thinking back to Dr. Sinatra's book, and uh, I'm learning about something called a 64-slice coronary CT angiogram. So in July 2010, I convinced my cardiologist to let me get that test, and this is about a month after my 61st birthday. And I come in with a calcium score of 479, which is high, and it puts me in the 75th percentile of risk for a future cardiovascular event. Furthermore, <laughs> the radiologist is looking at the CT images, 
And she says, uh, Malcolm, I, I see a pretty concerning blockage in your left main artery. <laughs> so uh, she says, I, I would be watching you like a hawk. <laughs> so at this point, I know I have heart disease, and I know exactly its extent. August and September of 2015, I start feeling, I start feeling some angina on my walk. It's fairly transient, it comes and goes. So I make an appointment with my cardiologist. He throws me on the treadmill. I felt fine. And I, guess what, I guess he liked what he saw. And he comes out and he says, uh, Malcolm, any insurance company would write you a policy for $1 million. Uh, surprise! <laughs> Eight months later, May 6, 2016, this is almost eight years to the day that my brother had his bypass surgery. I'm walking and I'm feeling considerable angina discomfort radiating down into my chest and down my left arm. So what I do is I don't waste much time. I get to the hospital and like my brother, I get a angiogram and it reveals heart disease and particularly concerning was a 90% blockage in the left main artery, which is a very, very critical artery, and I undergo a triple bypass. Now, let's look at things from the viewpoint of metabolic health. I'm gonna go back now to 2008. This is just shortly after my brother had his bypass surgery. I'm thinking, you know what? I should go on a low-fat diet. In fact, uh, one doctor said to me, Malcolm, try the DASH diet. That's a pretty fat phobic diet. So I do that and I would have to conclude that it was a failed experiment and here's why. A few months later, November 2008, I get my lipids done. My trigs are higher than they've ever been in my life, which isn't good. My HDL is lower than it had ever been in my life, which also isn't good. The trig HDL ratio is 3.7 which is nothing to write home about. In fact, it's probably reflective of insulin resistance. Metabolically speaking, you'd want to see a nice trig HDL ratio of around one. Christmas 2011, my wife buys me the book Wheat Belly by cardiologist Dr. William Davis. I take to that book like a fish to water. I just, I liked his low carb approach, wheat and grain elimination, closely watching blood sugar, and I adopt his approach for a number of months, and then I get my next round of blood work done in October 2012, and I am shocked <laughs> because I see that my cholesterol and LDL have risen to levels higher than I've ever seen before in my life. I have no idea why it's happening. I'm kind of worried about it. And of course, at that time, I have no concept that I might be a lean mass hyperresponder. What about fasting insulin? I go to my family doctor, I say, you know, I've been reading in Sinatra's book about fasting insulin. I'd like to get that. And um, he says to me, uh, Malcolm, why would you want to get that done when your hemoglobin A1C and blood sugar are perfectly normal? I say to him, well, yeah, th those numbers may look good, but how much insulin is it taking to keep those numbers in check? I have to tell him that insulin, insulin could predict metabolic issues years and years before it ever shows up in the blood sugar. And uh, to demonstrate that, I'm gonna show you an experiment that I call me and my twin and a friend. Here it is, it's more recent, it's March 2018. We all get tested by the same doctor. Our fasting glucose values are quite similar. Hemoglobin A1Cs, 5.4 right across the board. But I'm on a low carb diet, and my fasting insulin comes in at 4.7, which I consider to be quite good. I like to see it under five. My brother was trying to moderate his carb intake to some degree, and his fasting insulin comes in at 8.7. That's my twin. But my friend, now he's Italian. <laughs> You know what that means, lots of uh, pasta and bread and sugary tomato sauce. He comes in with a, not a very good fasting insulin at 14.2. 14, 14 so it's pretty clear that even though we have similar looking sugar values, insulin tells a completely different story. 
And I will point out that my friend is 20 years younger than me and my twin. What about uh, genetics? Everyone always says to me, well, you know, your father had heart disease, your twin brother needed the surgery. You know, it kind of runs in your family, doesn't it? I say, well, let's see. <laughs> so I'm going to take us back now to 2009. Again, I'm reading in Sinatra's book about LP little a. So I go to my family doctor and I say, I want to get LP little a tested. It's a familial genetic risk marker for heart disease. It could even be an independent risk factor. And he says, uh, Malcolm, I'm not going to do that test. Why not? Well, I don't know what it is, so I'm not going to test it. <laughs> and yeah, that's the same family doctor that told my brother to get back on his effing treadmill. In 2012, I see a new cardiologist that I'm referred to. And again, I'm quite excited to show him my 64 slice scan and things like that. He said, Malcolm, I, I don't really care what your arteries look like. Yeah. I thought that was kind of strange coming from a cardiologist. <laughs> he said, he said, just, just tell me your calcium score. So I do. And he says, and I quote, you don't have diabetes. You don't smoke. You're not overweight. You're physically active and your lipid profile is probably in the lower third of the population. So the only reason for you to have vascular disease is family history. And the only thing we can do about that, we gotta bring your cholesterol down by at least 50% with statins. And I, I just turned to my, I said, no sir, I will not take a statin. So. <laughs> He, he puts his hand out to me in a parting gesture and he says, nice to meet you. I can't do anything for you. And you are flying in the face of absolutely overwhelming scientific evidence. But am I? Well, I've had 23andMe done. It's a genetic test and it says that I'm at typical or perhaps decreased risk of heart disease. So what is the problem? I blame it on diet. Me and my twin ate horribly growing up and well into our adult years. Lots of highly processed food, junk food, high carb food, snacking all the time, constantly provoking our blood sugar and insulin, creating processes of glycation and inflammation, and damaging our arteries. I think if you do that for 50 or 60 years, you're gonna have a problem. In January 2018, I went to even a lower carb diet, more animal based. My brother didn't, but I did. And I saw my uh, lipid levels, cholesterol levels go up yet another quantum leap. So it's quite clear to me that I'm a hyper responder. And the question is, should I be worried about that? Well, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I'm here. It might be one of the reasons why you're here. But uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that I'm on the right track. So, next time you go to your family doctor and uh, he tells you that your symptoms are all in your head, <laughs> or your cardiologist wants to do nothing more than prescribe a statin because after all, LDL is the only thing that matters. Or, you know, people are telling you that ah, it's genetic, you can't do much about it. You have to become your own citizen scientist and do everything you can to manage your heart disease risk, whether you know you have it or not. You got to do your research. You got to kind of become like a CEO of your own health. That's, that's what I did. And uh, I can tell you, I'm never going to go back to the high carb, sugar spiking, insulin provoking diet that led to heart disease for me and my twin.